Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd. In the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger as to what follows. Family, friends, and foes, and homies and haters, welcome back again. Thank you for joining me. I receive you all, as usual, with only love and serenity, void of all hatred. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. So, again, I would like to humbly ask that you please hit the like button, share, subscribe. Barakallah fikum. May Allah reward you all. And please support this channel on Patreon. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, in our last video, we mentioned how Wajdi, his entire video, and I don't mean like some of it or most of it, I mean his whole video. He was actually using Orientalist tactics by interpolating context into what uh, Sheikh Abu Tob and Sheikh Abu Omar were saying. He himself was doing it. So one of the things that Sheikh Abu Tob was saying was how we should ha how should we should we react with uh, the Muslims and other human beings how we sh how we should be with them and how we should approach them in terms or relation to their sins and he was saying that we should hate the sin and not the sinner because all human beings can make repentance and as I mentioned before, because Wajdi, he interpolates context, he interpolated a context into what Sheikh Abu Toba was saying. So let's just look at what they were saying and let's compare. And I think that it is amongst the tricks of the, the, the Kufar to blow this thing up and to keep this thing going in order for the people to focus on that while they're continuing their attack on the minds and the hearts of our children mm -hmm. and even our adults. Mm -hmm. There's a simple issue. There are people who are qualified to talk about these issues. <coughs> and I hope, inshallah ta'ala, like I think, you know, I was, I'm thinking about Dr. Uh, Baker and Dr. Uh, Khalid Green. They have a program, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I hope that they would would speak about this in a long, you know, how they do their thing to make things clear because these people know one is from Britain, one's in the States. They can bring a lot of information, not just information, you know, context for mm -hmm. people to uh, understand. Mm -hmm. And not take another thing is making it a joke. You know, mm -hmm. some people, yeah. you know, whenever someone's being sarcastic, they're being dishonest. Mm -hmm. It, that shows a lack of of, of, of 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 honesty there. It's important because obviously the, the intention should be to guide the person, right? It's not to get one over on the person. When we say this, Islam has come to cure the patient, not kill him. Mm. We do away with the sickness, not the patient. You get my point? Mm. We we hate the sickness, we hate the act, we don't hate the actor. Because the human can always make tell them. That's what I have to say see, about see. At uh, minute, uh, the hour, two minute mark, Abu Tawba says, we hate the action, we do not hate the actor. Because the human can always make Tawba. Uh, and Allah says, First, so bring you evidence if you are truthful. And what is after the truth except falsehood? And it's we and you are either upon guidance or in clear manifest uh, deviance. Ya akhi, who brought this principle? So you don't hate shaitan or iblis. You hate the act of arrogance that prevented him from prostrating to Adam. You don't hate Fir'aun. You hate the actions of Fir'aun. 
You don't hate Abu Lahab, you hate the actions of Abu Lahab. You don't hate every fasik out there, and Allah Azza wa will not punish them in the hellfire. Allah will punish their actions in the hellfire, and they will keep them outside. Who will go to the hellfire? The people that commit the act. Where did this principle come from? If you study for 20, 30 years, and then you come and say to the Muslims that you hate the action, not the actor, that is batil. That is batil, ya sheikh. Now, you saw that, right? I don't have to go in, <laughs> I don't have to go into how um, Wajdi, the entire two, almost two hour video was interpolating context. Because honestly, if I did that, I can probably make 20 videos on, on how he interpolated context for every single point. Not some of them, all of them. Not most of them, all of them. You understand? So you got you know you know already that he's going to add context. But there's a lot to unpack here, but I want to go directly to the main point first. Like the main crux of the issue, so that you it's gonna be stuck in your mind. Abu Toba, he's talking in the context of making repentance, and this is clear from his speech. He's saying that we hate the sin, not the sinner. We hate the act, not the actor, in terms of the sin. And I, as you read, <laughs> when Wajdi said, Hatu burhanukum in kuntum sadikin, I hated the burhanukum, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and it's very easy to find uh, fatal on this issue because this is something that we learned even when I was like a kid, when I just became Muslim, this is something that's well known that you don't hate uh, the sinner, you hate the sin. It's so well known and it's not possible. And like I can't fathom that Wajdi did not know this. But that's neither here nor there right now. We're just gonna go directly into his interpretation. So he says, and he goes straight to Iblis. He goes straight to Iblis and says, so what, we hate uh, the action of Iblis' arrogance, we don't hate Iblis himself, and then he goes to Fir'aun and all these uh, people that Allah himself mentioned in the Quran. Now I want you to think about this, the psychology behind this. Because as a Muslim, bare minimum, you're supposed to have husnul dhan for another Muslim. Bare minimum, right? Now, Sheikh Abu Toba, He's half of the Quran, okay? He's a sheikh, he's an alim, okay? Well studied, respected elder in the community. So you would think that a Muslim who fears Allah would be accurate in distributing somebody else's message so that they can criticize it. And this is how a Muslim is supposed to be, right? If you're going to be criticizing another Muslim, you're going to criticize with accuracy. The purpose of criticizing is to improve or to correct. You understand? It's not to, excuse me, cause this type of division or hatred like these guys do, like Wajdi over here. Because it's not possible, absolutely not possible for anybody to listen to Abu Toba, what he said there, and extrapolate, Abu Toba means um, Iblis. It is absolutely not possible, especially since this principle is well known. And I challenge, and I challenge Wajdi himself. You say you're a student of Sheikh Salaf Ozan, go ask him. Go Sheikh, ask Sheikh Salaf Ozan. Yeah, Sheikh, do we hate the, uh, the um, action and not the actor? Ask him and see what he says. Without without interpolating any context into it, without you bringing Iblis into it, Yashik Iblis, do we hate his action and uh, and not hate Iblis himself? 
Let me ask you guys something. If Albutoba is speaking in the context of repentance, does Iblis make repentance? Did Pharaoh make a repentance? All these wicked people that Allah mentioned in the Quran, did they make repentance? He's talking about Muslims today, alive today. He's bringing Iblis. So I want to play a clip from Sheikh Bin Baz, Rahimallah. And I want you, dear listener, my homies and my haters, both combined, listen to Sheikh Bin Baz. And you tell me between Abu Toba's understanding and um, Wajdi Akari's understanding, who is closer to Sheikh Bin Baz, Rahimallah? Uh إن إنني أرتكب بعض المعاصي ثم أتوب ثم أتوب إلى الله ثم أرتكبها مرة أخرى وأتوب وهذا ما يسبب لي كثير من الأسى والضيق أخبروني عن ذلك جزاكم الله خير هذا يقع لكثير من الناس محمد ربك إذا كنت كل ما وقعت في الذنب تبت هذه من نعم الله وجاء في الحديث الصحيح أن الله جل وعلا يعجب مثل هذا ويقول علم عبدي ان له ذنبا ان له ربا يغفر الذنب ويأخذ به فاذا تبت من ذنبك فانت على خير فاذا وقعت في الزله ثم تبت ايضا فانت على خير المصيبه ان ان تصر على الذنب وان تبقى عليه والا تتوب هذه مصيبه عظمى ولكن عليك ان تجاهد نفسك لعلك ترجع لعلك لا ترجع الى الذنب لعلك تسلم منه عليك ان تجاهد نفسك وأن تبذل وسعك في السلامة من الذنب والبعد عن أسبابه ومجالسة أهله لعلك تنجو ولكنك مع هذا ما دمت من تفعلته بادرت بالتوبة وعرفت خطرك وأنك على خطر عظيم فتبت توبة صادقة فأنت على خير ولكن يجب أن تنتبه لأن أخشى عليك من التكرار أن تعتاد الذنب ثم تترك التوبة ثم تقيم عليه ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله فالواجب الحذر من هذا الدم سواء كان شرب مسكر أو زناء أو عقوقا أو قطعة رحم أو أكل ربا أو غير ذلك عليك أن تبتعد عن أسبابه وأن تحذرها وأن تضرع إلى الله صادقا أن يعيدك من هذا الدم وأن يكفيك شره وأن يحول بينك وبينه so dear listener, I'm asking you now, between Abu Musab Wajdi al Akari and Abu Toba, between these two, which one of them is closer to the fatwa of Sheikh bin Baz Rahimahullah? Which one of them? It is not possible that Abu Musab did not understand the context in which Abu Toba was talking. So if it's not possible that he didn't understand or, you know, it's not possible he had a misunderstanding in Surah Fahim, then why would he do something like this? Why is he bringing Iblis into this conversation? It is because he has a malicious intent anybody that uses oriental orientalist tactics to do a hit job on another person automatically that necessitates a malicious intent this is why he has like a hundred points in two hours it's a it's a type of manipulation technique you know what i mean he he says what Abu Tobo says, and then he goes and he says something bad about it. So it's not possible for him to have a good intention here. It's not. I'm very sorry. And the fact that he brought this principle that you do not separate uh, the sin and the sinner, the action and the, the, the actor, you don't separate them at all. And he brings Iblis into it. 
There's no possible way he can have a good intention. It's not possible because this is well known. In Islam, you do separate the the action and the actor. Iblis doesn't make tawbah. Who's, ta who's talking about Iblis? Who's talking about Pharaoh? How, how do these people come into this conversation? So now, we're going to look at what he has to say about Daniel Hagikachu. He says, um, he is what we call a mustashrik. Daniel is a mustashrik, i.e., someone who only studied in Jewish universities. According to our knowledge, he does not have any talibul ilm time in the traditional or the neo-traditional way. He does not have any, yeah, like going to Medina or Azhar or sitting like that. Uh, to call Daniel a mustashrik is, is a, a really an overstatement. Uh, that is an immediate uh, swipe at the brother that he only learned in Jewish universities. It's interesting that the term Jewish was used. Uh, you mean he learned in the West type. You don't know. You said that you're not aware of him having studied this and that. Why don't you bring the brother on? If y'all were able to be there, why could you not have him in a Zoom and bring him on so he can defend himself? Knowing that the saddest part of all this is that Brother John Fontaine, according to him in the episode with Tahir White, has already done an interview with Daniel and he sought permission or he sought advice from Tahir White whether he should put it out or not and basically Tahir White did not approve it, therefore it never saw the light. So that's more than once where Daniel is being attacked and spoken about and he's not given a chance to defend himself to the point that the, the, the poor brother had to actually write a comment on the podcast with the same words like this is not more than once you guys speak about me and no one cross checks with me, no one verifies, no one investigates. Y'all just talking. This right here is enough to say that Wajdi Akari made Namima. Astaghfirullah, Bilal, what are you saying? Astaghfirullah, how can you say that? Now you've gone too far. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Wajdi Al Akari made Namima in front of tens of thousands of people. <laughs> Accusing John Fontaine of some sort of hit job on Daniel Hinkichu. Let me explain something to you about John Fontaine, okay? He just does podcasts. That's it. He has no agenda in his podcast at all, except for making Dawa. When John Fontaine did his interview with uh, Sheikh Tahir, as Wajdi Akari mentioned, he had already previously previously done an interview with Daniel Hekikuchu. And he talked to uh, Sheikh Tahir, and Sheikh Tahir advised him not to put that interview out, and then Sheikh Tahir said what he said. And then John Fontaine contacted me, okay? And he says, Bilal, what should I do? What should I do? You know what I told John Fontaine? You know what I told him? I said, get Daniel Hakikachu on your show to defend himself. Surprise! Here comes uh, Waji Akari asking, why don't you get Daniel Hakikachu to come defend himself? Like, yeah, he... If you don't know, then why are you talking? Why even bring up this one thing? Why? Why? It's because you have malicious intentions. As a matter of fact, I was pressing the brother John Fontaine to get Daniel Hankikachu to come on and defend himself. And he said that Daniel Hankikachu refused to come. Surprise again! <laughs> oh, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? Okay, one second. Assalamu alaikum. How you doing, bro? Yeah, no problem. As long as you let them know that I initially, Tony spoke to me and I explained that I initially did a podcast with Daniel Hakikachu about his research on some of the research he done about liberalism and atheism, etc. The podcast was about 45 minutes long and uh, I actually 
thought it would be best to do a series with Daniel where we go through um, uh, each one of his topics in a bit more depth. Um, so the initial podcast was about 45 minutes long and it was very brief, kind of giving an overall summary. It's like an introduction to his work. Then, after I had interviewed Sheikh Tahir, um, I found out some things which Sheikh Tahir mentioned, such as uh, Daniel um, having like a Takfiri Sheikh, and I found this a bit concerning, to say the least. Um, I wasn't accusing Daniel of being like that, but from what I'd seen of his Sheikh, I felt a bit concerning, and out of my uh, intention not to uh, direct people towards the wrong kind of guidance, the wrong type of people, um, I felt that it would be best not to push Daniel's uh, previous podcast, which I'd already filmed, not to push Daniel as a teacher, simply because I don't want to push the lay people to the wrong people. So, instead, I contacted Daniel to see if he would like to come on to the podcast to defend the accusations which have been put forward with Sheikh Tahir, and also give me an opportunity to question him about these things to get to the bottom of it, not, you know, uh, things I want to actually question him, you know, on the podcast. Uh, to see where his stances are on these things, you know, regarding Akida and different things, and also his shake and things like that. And then, if I would have been happy with it, then uh, maybe I would have been happy to continue. But then he refused and said he wanted to do it on his own platform, which is fine. But people are getting the impression that I'm somehow silencing Daniel that I've done a podcast with him about these topics, and it's not. The, the, the podcast that I did with Daniel was nothing new. He's already covered them topics in a lot more depth elsewhere. Anyway, after seeing Daniel's reaction to different things and how he's kind of portrayed himself afterwards, I wouldn't invite, no, I would no longer invite him on my podcast. Um, I, uh, I, he commented on uh, a podcast that I did with Abu Toba and Abu Umar, and he sounded like a spoiled brat. Um, I thought I thought Abu Toba did a, a justice to him. He, he actually said that his research was was good regarding Yakin and everything, which I think is some of it's good. But I think some of it's also exaggerated. I think Abu Toba gave him way too much credibility for what he deserved. Yet Daniel still had an issue with that. Still had an issue um, with how that was addressed. It's like Daniel just ignores any praise. If you have one negative or one constructive criticism, Daniel just ignores everything and sees it as an attack and sees you as, as his enemy. It's a very childish kind of, you know, behavior to have. <laughs> That's how it went down. So now you see, you have the whole story. And this is why older brothers like myself, like Abu Toba, like pretty much any other older brother, <laughs> okay, always tell the youth to just stay out of it. There are other things going on behind the scenes that nobody knows about. So no doubt anybody with, you know, an open mind will see that 100% was the made, made in Amima. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it it there was nothing true about why did you not reach out to daniel hockey got you <laughs> okay they did reach out to daniel hockey got you 
Okay. <laughs> All right. So, but again, because of this principle that you can't separate the fi'l from the fa'l, Wajzi Akari made namima, he made backbiting, he made slander. So we don't separate anymore because this is an innovative principle to him. So what does that make Wajdi? So this is why we tell you not to get involved in these things because these people, all they do is they get you involved in, in sin. On a mass, on a mass. You know, it's, and I want to say congratulations to John Fontaine, to Abu Toba, and to Abu Umar. Because of one Wajdi Akari, you have tens of thousands of Muslims backbiting and slandering you so mabruk alf mabruk <laughs> you know as they say a thousand congratulations for your sins being removed from you by tens of thousands of backbiters and they're they're giving you their good deeds when you get involved in these situations this is what happens you don't know anybody you see in front of these screens you don't know a single one of them okay you don't know what's going on in the background you don't know who they're talking to i know i just blew your mind right now so look at your own situation and just don't involve yourself with these things just don't it's not worth it so I came to you in peace and love and serenity. I leave you again the same way. The homies and the haters, <laughs> the friends, the foes, and the family all together. No hate in my heart for any one of you. Please like, subscribe, share. Please, please, please support me on Patreon. I know that the trolling and the comments are coming it's fine it's all good it's all good <laughs> right but at the end of the day the only thing that matters is where wajdi got this principle from you know that you don't separate the act from the action and that somehow Iblis is making Tauba because that was the context that Abu Tauba was obviously talking about. This is not my bad. You know what I mean? That's what happens when you attach yourself to people. Now you can't even distinguish between the truth and the falsehood because to you, you love Wajdi so much, <laughs> he can't be wrong. And not only is he wrong, he's malicious. So, came to you in peace. I leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. Subhanakul bi hamdik wa shadul ala ant wa stafuka wa tubu ilayk. But don't scare Negroes today with no badge or no white skin or no white sheet or no white anything else. The police the same way. They put their club upside your head and then turn around and accuse you of attacking them. Every case of police brutality against a Negro follows the same pattern. They attack you, bust you all upside your mouth, and then take you to court and charge you with assault. What kind of democracy is that? What kind of uh, freedom is that? What kind of social or political system is it when a black man has no voice in court, right. has no nothing on his side other than what the white man yeah. right. chooses to give him. Right. My brothers and sisters, we have to put a stop to this. Right. And it will never be stopped until we stop it ourselves. Right. They attack the victim. And then the criminal who attacked the victim accuses the victim of attacking him. Yes, sir. This is American justice. Yes, sir. That's right. This is American democracy. Yes, sir. 
And those of you who are familiar with it yes. know that in America, democracy is hypocrisy. Right, right, right. Now, if I'm wrong, put me in jail. Right. But if you can't prove that a democracy is not hypocrisy, then don't put your hands on me.